Dos Arc Paladin Guide. What's up, Sibirs? GH here. This is gonna be a Paladin Guide that focuses on support. And with that said, let's not waste any more time. Let's do this. Paladin is a melee support class that uses one-handed sword and specializes on supporting party members. And with the use of its support abilities and proper class engravings, it can offer unparalleled survivability to anyone receiving its support. And it's also one of the classes in Lost Ark that uses damage increasing debuffs. And included to its package, the ability to use the Piety Specialty or Piety Meter. This yellow orb right here, this orb fills up as you hit enemies. And when it maxes out, you can either use Sacred Executioner or Holy Aura. Now, Sacred Executioner increases the range and damage of your basic attacks and blue skills. I did a lot of testing on this on different builds and Paladin is just better used as a support. Sacred Executioner is usable but not recommended because Paladins are just really good supports. Now, Holy Aura, the important one. This generates a massive aura centered around your Paladin and it increases the damage of your party members by 10%. So this is very helpful. And you can further improve this by adding its specified engraving called Blessed Aura, which adds damage reductions and heals your party every 1.5 seconds. This is mandatory. This is very helpful. You can use this level 1 or max it out if you can. Now, both Sacred Executioner and Holy Aura stops when your piety meter depletes. So you gotta make the most out of it. Now, engravings. Here is the engravings that you should use. First is Blessed Aura. As I've said, it will basically just add heal to your Holy Aura and also reduce damage received. Level 1 is enough, but max it out later on. Next engraving is Awakening. At level 3, it will reduce the cooldown of your Awakening skill by 50%. This is very important because your Awakening skill, which we'll talk about in a minute, can deal damage, gives your party member shielding, and generate an insane amount of piety for your piety meter, which will help you generate holy aura much more frequently. So max this out. Third engraving is expert. This will basically make your shielding and healing even better. In short, get this. Now, that's your three mandatory engravings. Focus on getting those. Start with blessed aura, then awakening or expert. After those, you can try to use Magic Stream at level 3. It will stack up to 5 times and it will give MP recovery. And at 5 stacks, it also gives negative 10% cooldown which will last as long as you don't get hit. And then there's Drops of Ether at level 3. Attacks have a chance to generate buffing orbs which ranges from Strength Orbs that gives 10% attack power buff, Flash Orbs that gives 15% crit rate, Wind Orbs that gives 10% movement speed, MP Orb that gives mana, and Defense Orbs that gives all defense by 10%. Magic Stream and Drops of Ether both are good. And the next engraving I'm gonna mention is totally optional. And it's Vital Point Head, which will increase the effectiveness of your stagger. This is a decent engraving because as a Paladin, you will lack stagger. And then of course, the Undying Heavy Armor. At level 3, it will give you 100% to all defense. This engraving will make you tougher and less likely to die on regular attacks. Now, stats. My recommended stats is mainly Swiftness, then Specialization. Put all your stats in Swiftness, then the rest is Specialization. Because of cooldown reduction, mobility, and faster skill animations. Now that we're done with the engravings and stats, now skills. We're gonna start from the top. And we're only going to discuss the important skills. If you have any questions on skills not mentioned, please comment down below. And the first skill is optional and it's charge. It's your mobility skill. You use this because your dodge is on cooldown. I don't use this, but if you feel like having another way to dash, then this is it. You can use this at level 1, but if you can reach at least level 4, add excellent mobility. Next skill is another optional skill and it's punishment. You only use this if you need more stagger because level 4 skill augment concussion will give you more stagger. As for the rune of punishment, you can use overwhelm. Next skill is executor sword. You use this mainly for stagger but it's also decent in damage. At level 4, you can use stigmata but any will work here. It doesn't matter. At level 7, it depends on the situation. If you need to destroy certain parts or armors of a boss, 
you're gonna be using weak point enhancement. And if you want more damage, then go Challenger's Will. For the most part, I use weak point here. At level 10, you can choose any here, but I prefer Broad Slash for better AoE. You can take away a few points from here because this doesn't need to be level 10. As for the runes, Overwhelm will be nice here because you will need more stagger. Next skill is Holy Sword. This is a decent stagger skill and you can use this to counter. At level 4, it's positioning for faster charge up time. But you can also use Stigmata if you want more damage. At level 7, it's Outburst of Light. Because this will make Holy Sword emit Divine Light Beam even though you missed. If you have noticed, when you miss your Holy Sword, it will not emit Divine Light. But if you have Outburst, hit or miss, it will emit Divine Light. And by using Outburst, you can turn Holy Sword to a long range counter. Now at level 10, it's released light so that you can lessen the cooldown. Again, you can take away points from here because level 10 is not necessary. As for the rune, Overwhelm is needed here. Next skill is Sword of Justice. It's your damage increasing debuff skill. Because if you hit an enemy with this, it will deal damage and debuff the enemy if you have the proper skill augment. Now at level 4, it's insight reduce the cooldown. Now at level 7, it's summon holy sword. Because this is the skill augment that adds a debuff that increases the damage received by enemies by 10%. So you need this skill. Now at level 10, pick dazzling light. Because this will extend the debuff by 3 seconds as long as the boss is getting hit. As you can see here, Dazzling Light will debuff the enemy for 10 seconds. And as long as the enemy is getting hit by Dazzling Light, it will remain at 9 seconds, extending the duration of the debuff. Now, as for the runes, you need Conviction Rune here. The higher the rarity, the better. Because this is a really good multi-hitting skill. And every hit can activate Conviction. Now, when you have the Conviction buff, you need to consume it with the Judgment Rune. I will explain it in a minute after the next skill. So next skill is God Sent Law. This creates an area that deals damage and buffs your teammates as long as they're inside. At level 4, you pick Shield to protect your team. At level 7, you pick Wide Angle because you want to increase the radius so that you can easily buff your teammates. You can pick Brilliant Law for the damage increasing debuff. But remember, we already have it on Sword of Justice, so we don't need Brilliant Law anymore. They don't stack, so better use the Wide Angle skill augment. Now, at level 10, pick Grace. And what it does is anyone stepping on God's and Law's area of effect will get damage received negative 70%. So this is an excellent skill augment for reducing damage. As for the rune, this is where you put the Judgment rune. Because this is the rune that will consume the Conviction buff. And when Judgment is activated by consuming the Conviction buff, it will give 100% combat resource buff, which is basically your mana. And the most important part, it will reduce your cooldown by 15%. Keep in mind, the values that you can see here can change in the future. Next skill is Wrath of God. This is an attack around you. This is a mandatory skill. Because this got an augment that increases attack power. And it also generates a decent amount of piety. Now at level 4, you choose Wide Thunderstroke. So it will have a wider AoE. Then at level 7, pick Fate so that you generate a bit more piety. You can choose Tenacity if you don't want the skill to get interrupted or cancelled. So it depends. But me, I just make sure I don't get hit when I use the skill. Now at level 10, it's Express Fury. This is why Wrath of God is important because it will increase the attack of your teammates and yourself. Just a reminder, don't use this alongside the other attack buffs called Heavenly Blessing which we'll talk about in a bit. Now as for the runes, you can use Wealth Rune. Now next skill, Holy Area. This is optional. You can choose not to use this and it wouldn't affect your gameplay as much. Now Holy Area is your damage reduction skill if your teammates are stepping on the Holy Area. And it also generates some piety. Now at level 4, pick Quick Prep. At level 7, pick Grace for the damage reduction. And at level 10, pick Endless Grace so that Holy Area will be wider and give more piety. As for the rune, use Wealth Rune. Now next skill is pretty mandatory and it's Holy Protection. It's your shield for the whole party. That's why it's important and it can also buff and heal with the proper skill augment. Now at level 4, 
pick quick pace so that your party can move fast and at level 7, now this depends on the situation, for the most part, you choose lingering power so that the shield will stay longer and sometimes you will have to use purify because there are bosses that debuffs and you can purify to remove them. You can also use robust protection if you want more stronger shield but it will only last 4 seconds. Good side here is it will heal faster. Now for this skill to heal at level 10 you will have to pick Vow of Light. And as for the rune use Gale Wind. And last important skill a very important skill it's Heavenly Blessing. At base, it will deal damage and reduce damage taken of the whole party by 20%. And with the proper skill augments, it will also have attack power buffs. Now at level 4, pick Fate for more piety. And at level 7, pick Valor, which is the attack power buff for the whole party. Just a reminder guys, don't use Wrath of God and Heavenly Blessing together because it doesn't stack. You need to wait for at least 8 seconds to cast another attack power buff. Now, at level 10, pick Absolute Blessing for Mana Recovery buff. And as for the rune, use Wealth Rune. As for the Awakening, use Alitane's Judgment because it will add shielding for the whole party and when it hits, it will generate an insane amount of piety. Now, skill usage. In general, don't use Wrath of God and Heavenly Blessing together. So you have to at least wait 8 seconds before casting either Wrath of God or Heavenly Blessing. As for the shielding, it's best to use this when you see a teammate with lower health so that you can heal and shield them. And then for the debuffing, use Sword of Justice first and then cast God Sent Law. I repeat, Sword of Justice for the damage increase debuff and conviction, then use God Sent Law for the damage reduction and to consume conviction and activate the judgment buff. As for the gems, go for the cooldown reductions all the way. And as for the cards, use cards that increases HP because the more HP you have, the more heals holy protection will do. And that's it guys, this is Gamey Hardcore. See you in the next one.